let's start. We're going to be starting recording here pretty soon. Thank you for Bridges Live okay. for, for joining on me. Bridges Live is my podcast channel, iHeart and iTunes Radio and Apple Podcasts. So please, right. you can always join me there. You can, you know, you can always reach me at drpaulholisticscience.com. And you can always reach me on and see the YouTube channel at um, Dr. Paul Dyer, a grandmaster on my YouTube channel. But we're 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 getting ready to have a great guest here, and I, I love having guests because to me it's about br- bringing families and people together. But it's more than anything; it's about bringing information, understanding, and action. And thank you, Miss Barbara Irwin, for coming on so we can talk. But please introduce yourself. Yes, I am Barbara Irwin. I'm an attorney, and I head up the. Transformative Justice Coalition, which is a national racial justice organization that concentrates on voting rights, economic justice, gender justice, has a real strong focus on youth leadership development, policing and criminal justice reform, and of course, international human rights. And environmental justice uh, also is one of our big areas. and we, of course, for this year, 2020, has, have been concentrating significantly on voting rights. Because what else yeah. is more determinative in this moment? I mean, all the suffering we're going through behind COVID-19, all the economic uh, you know, critical problems that we're having are all related to the vote. And it is time for us to get the vote on. So it's my joy to be here. For 25 years, I was the executive director and president of the Warriors Committee for Civil Rights and the Law. Many people know me in that role, and it is my pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Dyer, for having me. You you know, you said a mouthful, but when you start talking about rights, I know people are pulling out their hair like, (laughs) you don't got no... (laughs) What rights is this? Before we get into that, and... We, I, we have to put out a disclaimer. I did not call you on wardrobe, did I? No. Okay, so this is just by chance, because people have to say, Dr. Paul, did you call Barbara and ask her? <laughs> no, we, we did not schedule wardrobe together. This was a random um, synergy <laughs> pick. It must have been. So, you know, when it comes to information, when it comes to information, Barbara, we, I want to get a couple things cleared up without perception. You know, when, when it comes to law, we have a thing about perception, don't we? Yes. Why, first of all, can you answer that? Why is the law in more perception than understood? Because there's a difference. There's a huge difference between understanding law and perceiving the law. Well, you know, first of all, it's because of the way that the law has been used against us. Okay. Uh, When you consider that the Constitution of this country and most of the law in this country has been developed to protect property uh, and property rights. Okay. And the fact that African Americans were held in this country as chattel property. Uh, The law has never been our friend. Uh, I know it to begin with because most of the laws that were passed uh, were passed basically to regulate chattel property and to keep us, therefore, under in a subhuman, quote, uh, condition. And that's why when you look at the Constitution, it talks about three-fifths of a man for purposes of the vote. You look at the Constitution, it talks about, you know, runaway slave, I mean, real runaway, the property, whatever, uh, you know, basically the right for people to have their property returned. But you notice that when you go through that document, a couple of words you're never going to find, Africans. Okay. A couple of words yeah. you're never going to find, slaves. A couple words you're not going to find slavery because they knew how immoral the actions were that they were taken that they totally used euphemisms that is you know little nice words uh to try to uh avoid telling the truth and so the constitution itself is not a truth-telling document and then all the other laws that were 
past subsequent to it are you know are horrific and in fact the law as such for Africans in America don't become favorable literally until even though you have the 13th the 14th and the 15th amendments uh, they they are not construed in our favor by the Supreme Court mm. and it's going to take us until another 50s to start really seeing major positive legal decisions there are a couple you know a couple here and there because I teach you know constitutional law I teach civil rights law I teach comparative uh, constitutional law across nations and but one thing that I can tell you is that even though you got a couple of cases here and there sweat versus painter and all the rest of them in the 40s uh, it's really the 50s uh, with with Brown versus Ford that you see the first significant uh, you know um, groundbreaking uh, change in the law but still the law's not consistent in the 70s you get horrible decisions out of this court uh, now you still get terrible decisions from the court because the law has been about one thing and our people understand it, that's called power right those right. who have power interpret the law and 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 that's where and that's where we get the interpretation of law it's also that's that interpretation is off, often misunderstood so yes. now now let's talk about the silver rights and civil liberties do you yes. find people get that like a ping pong match and it's not the no. same no uh, you know people really get confused i mean you know there's civil rights right which right. is what's enshrined in the constitution yeah. that allegedly gives uh, individuals uh di different protections it's what they call negative rights rights that can't be infringed by the states are uh, you know mainly and rights that can't be infringed by the uh, federal power. Uh, then you have what we call civil rights, which is about economic rights, right? Right, right. We don't talk enough about that uh, at all in our community, but uh, but civil rights is very important. And then you have you know the whole you know framework of you know of human rights, you know the whole framework of civil liberties. Now civil liberties. Once again, it's very much like uh, civil rights in the sense that it is, you know, uh, entitlements that you have, affirmative entitlements. Like mm -hmm. you have a freedom of speech, no state can infringe that speech. Again, right. that's a negative, you know, right. Uh, and there are people who are libertarians, meaning that they're all about their, quote, civil liberties, their right to bear arms, right. their right to assemble, their right to have minimum government in their mind. Uh, all these other things that they assert is their rights under civil liberties. Uh, and so they're libertarians. And then there are right-wing libertarians. And there are, you know, leftist, middle grounder libertarians. And then you have those who basically are talking about civil rights. So there's a, you know, there's a whole different uh, set of different realities. But those nuances count. They do. Because when you look at the court right now, People are saying, well, what in the world is is uh, Roberts doing? He's voting favorably on DACA uh, and the rights of you know people who are living here, but then he votes negatively on this. And look at Gorsuch. What in the world is Gorsuch about? They're libertarians, people. These are not you know your traditional conservatives. You know you, they're conservative libertarians. And that's why they rule the way they do. That's why they're not the same as Alito or Thomas, uh, because they come from a different uh, ideological wing of the right. Uh, so, you know, so you have to understand that even though things may look one way, that there are differences based on ideological perspectives. So, you know, when it comes, and, and I think, thank you, Barbara, for just really touching on that and being a legal profession and, uh, and actually you having to break through the weeds of, the time. Uh, of, of the language. Because remember, I always tell people law is a language that's not often spoken in public, right? So if you, right. if you go to a different country and don't understand the nuances of the language, you're going to always, always misinterpret. I guarantee you. 
So, having you on is not only a blessing, but it's. I also want to be one point in particular, because I don't want to talk about, because blacks have been misunderstood in law, in the legal, yes. in the documents. It has never been, we've never been included in. We've been actually excluded out purposely. So, besides all that, how can someone help themselves with not misinterpreting. I don't want people to fall into a trap of, I know my rights. When it's not about your rights, they are trampling over. It's probably about your liberties. Mm -hmm. It's not about your right. So. Well, people need to understand that the law is not, it's it's counterintuitive. Uh, you know, a lot of things that people hear and think about the law, they think it should be one way, but it's actually the opposite. Uh, so it's very important. Uh, one thing that I say to our people all the time is if you're really sick, you're going to eventually take yourself to a doctor if you want to get well. Right. You know, if you're trying to live and you want abundant life, you're going to go to a doctor at some point. But we look at the law all the time and we want it to say what we think it ought to be. And we don't like to talk to lawyers. We don't like to uh, <laughs> study the law. I mean, you know, it's, it's a problem. We don't want to pay lawyers. We don't want to consult with them. And, of course, you know, there are, you know, people in any profession who aren't great uh, and aren't the best. But uh, I am always stunned by people who come to me and show me, you know, these outrageous uh, infringements or losses of property. And then I say, well, you know, what happened? Yeah. And well, they never got a lawyer. Never. Never got a lawyer to go with them into court to fight for their, uh, you know, their rights under the law, for whatever entitlements they may have under the law. So it is important, people, to, you know, understand your lane. You don't want me in an operating room. Right, right. There's nothing I'm going to do right. In that <laughs> room. I'm not even going to get the gloves on right now. <laughs> I'm not going to do none of this right. But what you do want is you want a surgeon in that room. And when you're talking about the law, you need a lawyer in the room. And you can go to paralegal courses. You can study street law. There's some great you know, courses out there. And uh, some of this is online. Uh, you know, I think it's very important for people to self-educate. And some yeah. people have been noticing all when it comes to these videos. Yes. They've been doing a great job of saying, I know that in my state, I'm allowed to video the police. I can do it X, Y, I have the right of this. So you, so that's great, because you can teach, and I'm all supportive for clinics, I'm all supportive for those mechanisms, but I do want to say to people, you know, there are some things that are complex in the law, and guess what? We lawyers, what do we do? We get lawyers. When we have complex legal mm-hmm. issues, I'm dealing right now with a copyright issue. And I'm not a copyright lawyer, even though I'm a darn good, uh, you know, at the top of my field, right, in uh, civil rights and, and in the human rights. But uh, when it comes to copyright, that's not my baby. Uh, so I have to talk to another lawyer. I hire lawyers to help my situations. So don't ever, you know, be afraid because nobody's born knowing the law. The law is so contorted. Mm-hmm. It's so distorted. It's so illogical. Uh, in many ways, it's so counterintuitive. It's not what it is not straightforward the way it should be. Uh, so I don't blame people from being like, how could that be possible? How could they mistreat me, come into my house, tear right. up my house, and I have to pay if uh, they took me by ambulance? <laughs> if they beat me, I got to pay for my ambulance. Right, right. How is that possible? Uh, you know, so there are these things that are, you know, contorted. And I, I think it's so hard, it's so important that people understand that. Don't be afraid of the law. That, and, uh, I, and, I, and, I think that, cool. and I think that's what it is. I think, you know, I, I have, I've been having these mental health forms. I've been having yeah. these healthy black men forms. I've been, I love having informational forms. But here's the thing we know about mental health and about getting help is that blacks in the community has a stigma of one raising their hand for help and getting professional help right but but we also know 
there's kind of like we're not too sure if we can trust it. So, That's right. so we we have this um, 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 inhibition to like go to an attorney because I might get screwed over. I might go to right. mental health and now I lose my job. And and there's a lot of you know animosity that we have with these professions. And I and I truly want to break this barrier because it only holds us back because we know very little collectively. I'm not talking about the individuals, but I'm talking collectively the mob knows very little. So how do we yes. how do we get past that? Well we gotta you know uh there's a lot of things we've been teaching ourselves to do differently. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh you know and that's the beauty about black people. Is that our, it's our resiliency, yeah. our flexibility, our ability to turn on a dime? We didn't know what TikTok was a year ago. <laughs> we all got it down now. <laughs> you know, the, hey, a number of years ago, you could have said the word, you know, Facebook to half of us, you know, and now we Facebooking like crazy, we tweeting, we doing all kinds of stuff. I mean, we can teach ourselves yeah. skills, yeah. just like we taught ourselves for decades different dances songs, different uh, ways of uh, praising. I mean, we are flexible people, and it's very important for us to understand that in this time, that old, old methodologies may only work so well. Right. Uh, new methodologies are required, and new ways of protest. I, you know, when people, I was so pleased when I looked up, you know, after COVID, and I saw BLM Chicago. Black Lives Matter Chicago doing a car caravan protest. I said, okay, that's right. <laughs> you don't want to be out there yelling at each other and getting COVID on each other. So we got cars now. That's right. right. Driving around, doing our protests in the cars. I mean, you know, there we have to be adaptable. And one thing that I do understand is that most of the systems most of the professions that have existed have been used against us. You know, white structural racism. We live in a white structural racist society. Yeah. It has only two goals. One is to advantage whites in every possible way. Now, its second, be, be, and its second goal is to subordinate and disadvantage all of us. Now, and now, that's, you know, our reality. So it doesn't surprise me that we have some of this, but we got to also be smart enough that when you see Barbara online coming, you know I'm there for you. Now, Barbara, you know? Barbara, when you say those two points, yeah. and you've gotten the pushback of how can you say that? I can say it. Right. Because it's, it's factual. It, it is factual, but so how can we help explain to people who don't understand the facts or is it you think they don't want to believe in the fact? Or is it or is it their perception to negate the fact? Which cause there seems to be a they're not getting it. It seems like we keep explaining it over and over. We show them the numbers, we show them the statistics, we show them the historical things, and then and then it's like, okay, but it's time to move forward. But this is systematic. This is a part of the system that either needs to be changed or move how do we that's what I'm asking. Well, you know, you know, I, I accept that there are certain people you can't educate. Okay. Uh, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, you know, these 25% who, who are just, you know, you ask them, like, right now, if you and I made up a race, yeah. let's say we're going to call them the telelites, uh, the telelites, and we ask them, are they intelligent? No, they'll say. You <laughs> ask them, uh, are they lazy? Yes. You ask them, are they patriotic? No. You ask them, uh, you know, all these, I mean, they will come up with every negative stereotype because if it's not white, that's what they think. And that's the reality of, you know, our situation. That's why Trump can do, he can always, in any given day, he's got 20 to 25% of this population yeah. who's going to believe anything he says as long as he ramps it in a white power flag, a uh, white power boat. They're going to believe it. And because that's what they believe. They believe America was founded as a white nation to make them great as white people. And they're mad. They're so angry 
about anybody else getting power, anybody else demanding justice, anybody else going to it. You know, racism, people got to understand, racism is not just individualistic. That's a huge mistake. People always want to talk about the few bad apples and all of this and the few people who don't get it. No, no, no. Racism is structural, which means, and it's organic. And anything organic, what does it do? If it, you're organic, it moves. you're about reprodu reproduction, right? Right. About reproducing yourself, but you're also about defending yourself. You will fight to the death to keep yourself alive. And racism is the same way. So when we're fighting right structural racism, of course it's going to deny what it's doing. Of course, it's going to try to find some blacks who are going to validate. Of course, it's going to uh, dissemble, appropriate, you know, paint Black Lives Matter on top of the building if they have to. Right, right. Uh, and then keep keep discriminating, right? And keep you know, giving all the power to whites. I mean, you know, of course, you're going to do these things because that's what an organism does to survive. It's going to always transmute. It has adapt, to. And do all kinds of things. So don't be surprised, people. I mean, don't sit up there and say, well, what happens? Remember, progress, white, black progress in this country has never been linear. It has never gone from one point to one point, from one bad to one good. It's never been that way. We've always had a zig and a zag. Uh, you know, we make some progress, there's a backlash. We make some progress, there's another backlash. Sometimes you could be in the zig and the zag at the exact same moment. And if you think I'm wrong, remember 2008, Obama wins. And people say, oh, my God, black president. Amazing <laughs> progress. Amazing no. progress. We that next day, McConnell and yep. all kinds of people are meeting saying we're going to destroy his power. And they did. And we're going to do everything we can to suppress the vote. Also, you can be in the zig and the zag at the same time. So let's talk about the vote because that's huge, and yes. I, and I've been I've worked on campaigns for years, and it uh, it 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 bothers me to no end. The day of an election, I'll knock on someone's door. It's the day, and they'll look at me dead in my face and go, "What?" And I'm like, you're voting today? Voting for who? And I'm like, wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. You know, there are in this country uh, of the eligible adults who are able to vote, 50 million, 51 million people are unregistered. And that ain't all black folks, right? No. Just, they're, they're, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not us. That's not just us. There are 8 million, 6 to 8 million African Americans who are unregistered, uh, who should be registered by yesterday. Uh, there are uh, 13 to 17 million people in this country who have a uh, felony record, who, yeah. have, who are eligible to vote now. And don't know but it. But they're totally confused. Yes, it. don't know because it. Because in, in too many states, they they have restrictions and they yes. don't want to go to jail because they make a mistake. So those people don't register. They don't even try to vote because they don't want to end up back in jail because they don't have the correct information. That's where quote knowing these rights is important. Mm -hmm. That's where people need to you know have the correct information and why that's why that is so critical and uh, and so necessary. But we're not and so we we have. Uh, we, uh, can you hold one second? Absolutely. Yeah. I hear somebody at my front door. One minute. So we 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 we're, we're going to talk about um, why Barbara comes back, and one of the things the reason why I have Barbara on here in Bridges Live is so we can get people to understand there's a there's a fight for survival or a fight for living, and if you don't know that you have a choice to fight to live and you always think you're on survival mode, then you're going to lose out. You're, yes. you're going to lose out because you are so far behind just trying to survive. We need to understand we have 
We've always had, as people, black people, a nation of people, the nation of humanity has a place to live in glory. Yes. But you have to put in the work to do it. Otherwise, then you're always surviving. And and that's some of the things that I don't I don't think people understand the difference between living and surviving. That's why I teach the living sciences. People say, Well, Dr. Paul, what do you do? I say teach the living sciences. It's about living, it's not about surviving. Well, well also, you know, in our tradition, it's been about surviving, living, and excelling. Yes. Because we want to excel also. You know, we want to rise above, we want to transcend. You know, uh, Dr. King mm. wasn't just about, you know, being a good preacher. He wanted to be an exceptional preacher. And he that's how he became one. Uh, one of the best orators, you know, of, a, of an entire century. Uh, you know, that's because that was his goal. Mm -hmm. He studied for, you know, he studied the masters. He studied the best writers, the best speakers. He, you know, he, he went after it. He practiced. LeBron James is so good at playing basketball because he studied, he practices. Yes. He works out. He does that. You know, anything that you want to be good at in this country, uh, period, in, in life, uh, anything that you want to be good at, you can excel at if you really apply yourself. Uh, and really, you know, take it to the maximum degree. You turn out that, hey, you know, like Valerie Simpson. Yes. Uh, you know, Valerie Simpson's a great, you know, songwriter. She and Nick Ashford wrote all these amazing songs. I know. Scenes, and uh, don't necessarily know they wrote them. Uh, but, you know, but one day she stepped out and said, I want to sing. You know, I got a voice. And so she used it. Or you can look at T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes could play the piano. If you never see him playing, because he knows that he's a better preacher than he is a pianist. Uh, so, you know, so you have to really figure out where do I excel? And when it comes to the vote, let me bring it back to the yeah. vote. Uh, you know, what I want to say to everybody right now is that every single one of us have to get up every day and do something new. And that is look in the mirror and say, I am a voting rights champion. I like that. And I'm going to be one through November 3rd. That's who I am. In this moment, I am Professor this, or I am Mom that, or I am Dad X, but I'm also a voting rights champion. And that means that I'm going to worry the hell out of everybody I know. To vote. <laughs> to make sure that they are ready to vote. That means that uh, I'm going to support people. I'm gonna make sure that I can take people to the polls, give them rides. I'm going to call people. My mother, on my mother at 89, gets up on election day, and she calls at least 20 people. See, she call, starts so call five, somebody, right? She calls at five in the morning from her bed. Uh, she gets that phone, and like she tell me, she doesn't want a smartphone. She wants a dumb phone uh, you know, because she can't get on the internet and do all that. But she will call every one of my brothers and sisters and her, some of her grandchildren, and she's going to say the following. Are you going to vote today? You know you, that it's voting day. Then she'll say, and what time are you going to vote? Where do you know where you're going to vote? No, 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 I don't want to hear that. I want you to take a moment, because Grandma is going to stay on the phone, and you're going to call me back, because I want to know just where, where you're going to vote and where... And oh, what do you mean you don't have a ride? Well, why don't we wait? You call and get the so and so on the other line and tell them to come pick you up. I mean, she does that. That's how she operates. And we all can be a Vera. Uh, that's my mom's name. We all can have that capacity to make a difference. Remember the most powerful woman in Alabama in 2017 during the Senator Doug Jones um, a race? was a black woman who said to the media, she said, I don't have a college degree. I don't have a high school degree. She said, but I had a car and I had some gas money. And she took a hundred people to the polls. That's who we got to be. Voting rights champions. You know, and, and there's, the, I'm, I, I am going to leave off on that. I want to have you back on later. I know you're a busy woman. I know this is just a time that this is, because I believe this is our new revolution. 
I, 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 I really believe this is our new yes. revolution. And, and if we don't put our foot in, both feet in, hand in, and, and I think the problem, what we had as black people, as a nation of people, is that we, we sat back and we crossed our arms after and we were like, oh, we're good now. Oh, we don't have to move forward. And they, they put it, so we have to be, like you said, we have to be a champion on voting and, and, and we've missed out on judges. I don't want to, that's a whole other conversation. Man, that's a great, that's yes, it a, because that, the judicial branch. Yes. Wow. That's all I got to say. it's appointed 200 conservative anti-civil rights judges. 200. 200. Half of them can't even say that the vote, that uh, Brown versus Board was correctly decided. These are racist, bad, anti-civil rights judges. So everything counts. You know, don't be sitting up there letting people trick bad you talking about their, their vote doesn't count. Of course it counts. It counts for every single thing you do every day. When you turn on a light bulb, somebody decided who's going to regulate that into it. Yeah. When you turn on the water in the morning, somebody's decided how much you're going to pay for that water and how it's going to be available, what's going to be in it. Mm. When you walk out your door and you turn on your car, somebody's decided how your car is regulated, how you get your license. When you walk on the street, somebody's decided how that street is going to be paid or not paid. When you drive, every light you hit, all of that is regulated by government. When you go shopping, everything you buy has a price on it, and you pay a tax or you don't based on the law. Come on, folks. Everything. Everything. Everything that you do. Don't be telling me about I got my freedom and so on and so on. If you're on the Internet, that's also regulated, it's regulated. By, by somebody. Uh, you know, everything you do. So don't tell me about... Uh, my vote doesn't count. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. Education, everything, housing, everything that we're talking about. Where Are you getting jobs? Are you seeing jobs in your neighborhood? That also has a lot to do with who's sitting in those positions. Economic development, what's being built. Don't tell me it doesn't have anything to do with you. It does. It has everything to do with you. So before we take off, I know we get some questions. You probably get a lot more. I live in this state. I live in that state. I live in yes. this county. How do I get a hold of a Barbara who's going to be a champion that I can talk to, that they can steer me where I can go get those other professionals, those people, because love you, sister, but you're not everywhere. Right. And, and one thing we're doing is that we're building cadres throughout the country. And we have what's called the Voting Rights Alliance. And we have hundreds of organizations and hundreds of individuals who belong to it. And people can become part of it by going to VotingRightsAlliance.org. VotingRightsAlliance.org. Uh, and you will find a sign-up sheet. And we put out newsletters, we put out information, and we're having a big symposium on August the 6th through the 8th where we're going to be training people. So all those people who are listening and saying, yeah, I want to know about some voting rights law. Yes, I want to know about what's legal for felons and ex-felons and you know, formerly incarcerated people, you know, uh, returning citizens. I want to know what those rights are for my state. We're going to be training on all of that. Uh, we're going to be training on how to register people to vote, how to turn people out to vote, how to do the best voter okay. education, the best messaging. So you want to join that. That's a summit that we're going to have. And you can become part of that by going to Eventbrite and putting in R March to Vote. R March to Vote dot Eventbrite.com. And that's how you can register for this summit. Or when you go to votingrightsalliance.org, it's on that page. The uh, the flyer is for how you can register. And frankly, everybody's saying, well, how much does it cost? Nothing. Because we're about the work. 
I'm not about getting rich right. off of my people's pain. Yeah. I am about making sure yeah. that, we are, that we are working together in unity and in collaboration to protect the best, the maximum amount of people we can protect, that we can help and support and uplift. So absolutely, go to votingrightsalliance.org, and you're going to find that great information. To sign up for the summit, uh, the August 6th. The reason why it's August 6th, everyone is that that's the 55th anniversary of the voting rights act yeah that's yeah. when that act became effective yeah 55 years ago so we want you to be part of the celebration and then part of the training and strategy workshops so yes you can become connected to other people in your state you can become con uh, empowered with great information because we're going to have all kinds of materials available. Uh, this is no joke. This is not about a bunch of talking heads making themselves feel smart or good because they gave a great speech. This is about actual work and actual training and actual helping uh, people out there who want to do the best they can do. Will this, so will, come on, my bully rights champ. Will, this, will this be online because of the whole COVID yes, thing? It's be totally okay. virtual. Okay. Totally virtual. Okay. It's going to be all online. That's the beauty of it. So you can be uh, participating from Alabama and your friends from California can be doing the same thing. Uh, you can. It's going to be totally virtual, uh, totally accessible, uh, totally there. And we're going to have all kind of blocks for crazy folks who get up in there and try <laughs> to make it difficult for others. We're going to take them out. <laughs> They're not going to be there <laughs> messing around. We're going to have a really good system. Uh, and we are so excited. We are going to have some inspiration. It's going to be a really good set of programs. And I'm so excited about it. And thank you for letting me get that in and let people know. I I'm excited because I know I want to be a part of it. And I'll talk to you more off air about that yes, and all that stuff. Do. But please, get out and vote. Get out and vote. Get out and vote. Get out and vote. And that's, that's just really. And, and then we'll go from there. Understand, remember, there's a difference between perception and understanding, right? Yes. There's a difference between liberties and rights. Yes. So there's a difference between just information and understanding. And if you understand something, yes. then, then you can actually put your life into a full action. And that's what we want. And I'm so glad, Bar. Thank you, Bar Irwin, for coming on. Esquire yourself. And um, we're going to take off here. We're going to wish everyone, thank you for joining Bridges Live here and this podcast. If you ever want to reach me, drpaulholisticscience.com. You know, you can always reach me. And thank you for your comments and blessings. And we're going to take our prayer. So if you want to join us in prayer, please bow your heads. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us together and allowing your words to be heard, allowing your hearts to be touched, allowing your soul to be risen above all else because we know together with information in your name we shall overcome in heavenly father in jesus christ we pray amen thank you thank you so much for having me and everyone really thank you. i and i will call you later miss barbara thank you for having me and i'm sorry about the disruption oh sorry. don't worry about it it's <laughs> i'm sorry about that and um, I didn't know anybody was going to be at the door. <laughs>